Right guys, hello another video for you all. All hands on deck, Valve Steam Deck. Not to be confused with the Elgato Stream Deck. Two very different devices that Google gets confused about when you do the search. Valve Steam Deck will be a portable handheld gaming PC. In fact, just a portable PC, which I'm incredibly excited about, very optimistic about, not just what it means for portable gaming, but what it means for gaming on Linux, which is uh, most people are used to Windows, but there are other operating systems out there. So I'll break the video down with timestamps, as I love to do, help you find what you want to see. Lots of people are going to have questions. Of course, we'll get more answers over time and when the device is actually released. But I want people to understand my thoughts and why I've ultimately put my money where my mouth is. I've put my reservation down, made the deposit, which is refundable. If you change your mind within 30 days, back in your bank account, after 30 days, they'll credit or Steam account. Whichever one you reserve will be the one that you are buying. You cannot reserve the base model and then when they email you to say you can buy it, you can't change your mind. You, you need to understand which one you're going to get and put that reservation in. So if I'm logged in, it actually tells me Q2. I've got my reservation in on the 17th. Uh, so I think the 18th and 19th, if you looked, it was actually saying if you reserved it, it would be the third quarter now it's saying Q2. It's everything saying Q2. So yeah, maybe they've ramped up production. Um, so yeah, it might get pushed back. It might get brought forward. We don't know. But the sooner you get your reservation in, the better. The four pound that I've paid, uh, that deposit is knocked off the um, the actual price. So I've already paid four pound towards it. I just need to complete the rest of the uh, transaction when they allow me to. So we'll talk through what the device is. A lot of people are calling it a uh, Nintendo Switch killer and making comparisons to the Nintendo Switch, which I completely understand. If you don't know what the Nintendo Switch is, it's Nintendo's handheld gaming console. You can play it portably when you come home, put it in its dock, its cradle, that it plugs to the television, and you can play it like a traditional console on the big screen. That's actually kind of cool. The Steam Deck will do that too, portable gaming, and you can hook it up and play these games on a big screen. But it's also a PC as well. So be able to use USB-C hubs that are already available. It will have its own bespoke dock, which we are able to attach keyboards and mice and printers to and yeah, displays. It's it's actually pretty awesome. And that's really how I see it being a switch killer, provided parents are aware of it. So from my personal experience, my friends have kids, the kids wanted the switch, the parents bought the kids a switch. The next thing they asked for is a gaming PC. My friends come to me and said, they're asking for a gaming PC. I know you're good at this stuff. Can you help us out? I ask them, how much do you want to spend? And they say about £300. And I have to tell them that's almost next to impossible to achieve for that price. So Valve said themselves that the pricing was painful, but critical to it being a success. So my friends are saying £300 because that's the price they have in the head what consoles should cost so for the base model to come at 349 it's not really going to be that because you're going to end up buying an sd card for more storage that is just as true for the nintendo switch don't really want to call it a hidden cost but you know what i mean so yeah you need to understand about the storage we'll go through this later in the video and help you understand what the device is because these are nothing new they've been around for a while these mini pcs so probably the, the fairest comparison we can do right now is the A and Neo. A guy designed this and built it in his bedroom, basically, and then turned it into a, a business. So this has a Ryzen 5 4500 APU that would normally be inside a laptop. Got six cores, six threads. The Steam Deck is the Van Gogh architecture. It would be four cores, eight threads, but it will have a better graphics chip. Four cores, eight threads is fine. That's what I have in my current desktop PC. Uh, it's the fact that it's going to have better graphics that's going to make the difference. If we look at the A and Neo, it's sold out. Uh, but £744, never mind shipping and import fees. For this guy to make money, he's got to make it off the hardware. Where Steam has a slight advantage is that they make money off their Steam store when they sell games. So they can sell the Steam Deck at a loss or close to cost and recoup money through games. Xbox and PlayStation do exactly the same thing. You pay subscriptions, which we won't have to pay on PC. Um, that's how they make their money back. The games are more expensive on console than PC as well. So long term, 
Steam Deck could be really viable. Uh, so that's not the only device. There are other companies that do them. GPD have been around for a while. They used to do Android handheld devices. Then they started doing these teeny tiny PCs. So the GPD Win3 is their latest model, which uses Intel architecture, Intel CPUs. So yeah, it's quite a cool device. Point out, just see it here plugged into a USB portable monitor. You'll be able to do that on the Steam Deck as well. That's going through the USB-C port. But what they'll say in this review under connectivity is that not only can you attack attach monitors and peripherals and charge the device uh, but it will do eGPUs but this is Intel technology we won't be able to do that on the Steam Deck and to be honest I don't think it really matters those of you that don't know what it is so an external GPU solution this is Jared's tech he's done videos all about it so you buy an enclosure I've looked maybe a Razer one to be 170 pound that comes with the power supply the enclosure and then you get take your PC graphics card, bought separately. I've either upgraded my PC, take my old card out, put my new one in, and I put the old one in the enclosure. So yeah, people do this for laptops or those mini PCs, but a lot of people say it's a waste of money. Like what you've had to pay for the enclosure and you never get the full potential of that graphics card. He's putting in a 2080 Ti, top of the range card, last generation, won't get anything close to its full performance because it's bottlenecked by getting the data down that cable so a lot of people think it's a waste of time waste of money i kind of agree and amd has said we don't really see a use case for it very niche we don't really need a rival technology to it but if you're interested now you're aware of it and you can go check out jared's tech and him doing the deep dive showing you just how much performance you can lose We'll just do a quick shout out to Taki Yudon and his YouTube channel because he loves to play around with these little devices. He's had loads of them. So he's got videos up showing that AN Neo, which close to the Steam Deck, but we're expecting it to be better for games. And he shows it playing The Witcher 3, 60 frames per second, Dark Souls 3, Resident Evil 3. So by extension, Resident Evil 2, which I actually thought was better than the remake of Resident Evil 3, got Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, Destiny 2, Far Cry New Dawn, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Okay, well, you're turning down the graphic settings a little bit, but the fact that you can play this stuff, AAA PC titles on the go, portably, is kind of crazy. So the other reason people are calling the uh, Steam Deck, a potential Switch killer, is you can do emulation. You can actually play Switch games on a PC through software, which is called emulators. So again, he's done a video of this with the A &E showing it doing the Wii U, Breath of the Wild. Uh, you can do the Switch version of it. It's just the Wii U version runs much better. Nintendo hates us doing this, but it is possible. So he shows the Nintendo 3DS does do the switch as well so that'll be pokemon it's not just nintendo stuff he has a stab at the xbox 360 the playstation 2 doing god of war even the ps3 believe it or not so uh yeah incredibly impressive anyone that says the steam deck won't do emulation you need a really powerful desktop pc we know they're wrong because we can see the a and is doing it and the Steam Deck's going to have a better graphics chip. So expecting really big things. I've done emulation for a really, really long time. Really looking forward to playing around with that on the Steam Deck. So we should probably start going through the overview of it. Talk through the marketing jargon and try and help people understand what it is and, and which one they should be buying. The most gaming power you have ever held. Uh, introducing Steam Deck starting at 349, start shipping December 2021. Okay, so I've got my reservation in. I'm not going to get it till Q2 next year. People might get it before me. That's fine. If it's not what I'm expecting it to be, I can refund it. Uh, I'm not the first out the gate, but then that gives developers time to do all kinds of magic with emulation software and just get things working even better on the Steam Deck. I don't mind that I'm not the first person to use it. Uh, I'm just really excited for what its potential is. 
It says all in one portable PC gaming. Steam Deck brings the Steam games and features you love to a powerful and convenient form factor that you can take wherever you go. It's got some actual gameplay footage. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Pretty recent AAA title. And yeah, it's playing it really, really well. So IGN, they got the exclusive. They got to play these games hands on. They did like Doom Eternal and they everything they played, Valve have actually said they did that off the micro SD card. The internal storage had nothing to do with it. It was all done off micro SD and IGN were incredibly impressed with this. Uh, so it was playing it in a worst case scenario. So they said, yeah, 720p resolution. I think Doom Eternal was played at high settings. Some games might be at medium settings, but overall played well. Everything looked really good. So it's promising, really, really exciting. It says hardware designed to put real games in real hands. It says it's powerful. Steam Deck runs the latest AAA games and runs them really well. Now, the question some people have is, what are the legs like? We might be able to play GTA 5, but what happens when Grand Theft Auto 6 comes out? Will it be able to play it? We can't answer that. What we can say is that it already has 50,000 games on Steam. Uh, so... We'll talk about the Proton compatibility layer later, some of the geek stuff. There's a lot of games on Steam to play already. Those of you that don't have a Steam account, what you'll discover if you go into the ecosystem is that there's sales, especially summertime and winter, but all, all year round. And there'll be a game that you're meant to buy and then you see it come up in the sale for like two or five pounds. You just buy it. So many of us are guilty of having all these games we've bought, but never actually played them. So I might be playing Grand Theft Auto 6 on my gaming PC, but then think, oh, I never actually finished Dark Souls. I could play that on my Steam Deck on the commute to work when I'm on the train or what have you. So there's many of us who have a massive backlog of games that we've never actually played or gone through. Um, so yeah, having this device, being able to do that, I actually think is pretty cool. So yeah, I can't say how many years into the future we could be playing um, future titles on, but we know there's plenty that we, we can do out the gate. There's, I don't want to say like exclusive titles like you get on the Switch, but you can have more games to play than uh, the Switch has available. So uh, that's, that's kind of impressive. It says it's comfortable, full fidelity controls, long play sessions, no compromises. It will be heavier than the Switch. I don't know how much of a problem that will be for children, but I, I would imagine I'd hold it in my hands, rest my hands on my lap to support the weight. don't really see it, the weight being a major problem. It says it's versatile. You can connect to peripherals, throw the picture onto a big screen and do all the other PC things you'd expect. It is, in essence, a portable PC. Your Steam library is already on your deck. So some of my viewers, subscribers, you will have an Xbox or a PlayStation. Uh, you used to have like a dashboard. You might have used the PC but never thought of doing gaming on it either because it's too expensive. We don't really see it very convenient to play games on. So you won't be aware that Steam is software. We'll call it the app that we install for us to have an account that we can buy games, download them, and load them. So in the background, it's shown a laptop. That's what we call the Steam client, how we would traditionally navigate it with a keyboard and mouse. But it does have something called big picture mode. If you just wanted to use a gamepad for a console experience, it takes over the monitor or your TV screen for it to be like a console dashboard. And that's what's shown in the forefront on the Steam Deck. Now, what they've said is they've reworked big picture mode. So it's not just for the Steam Deck, it's how it's going to look on PC as well. So you've got uniformity across whether you're doing it on your Steam Deck or doing it on your PC. Uh, you see we've got shortcut buttons on that device. Steam opens up the menu. We've got a button for search, button for options. If you've used the console, I don't think you can have any problems whatsoever navigating your way and playing on the Steam Deck. It says it's as easy as powering it on. You sign into your account and you play your Steam games, which you've obviously bought, downloaded. We will point out that they are saying you're not locked into Steam, that there are other stores that we buy stuff off, like the Epic Store or Battle.net to do World of Warcraft and Diablo, stuff like that. They're saying that would be possible. You can put Windows on the device if you want. So, yeah, plenty of options. Got some more gameplay being shown. Steam without compromises. So the free storage options. We do need to talk through this a bit to help people understand. Uh, so we've got three models there. The actual power of them, as into playing games, is identical across all of them. How they vary is mainly down to the storage. The top spec with 512 gigabyte does have an anti-glare 
screen. But let's let's talk through the storage options. So the base model is eMMC. Many people are veering away from this going, oh, that's going to be slow and rubbish. Well, that's what the switch uses, 32 gigabyte of eMMC. That's what my phone uses. That's what your phone uses. We don't really think of these as slow. But anywho, uh, but it's not really a lot of storage, 64 gig. So you will expand it out with a micro SD card. Some are better than others. So let's let's just talk through the concerns people have about the SD cards. So this is Digital Foundry. They did a deep dive on the Nintendo Switch quite a while ago. So they're showing Breath of the Wild here. 35 seconds for it to load off the cartridge, the game they bought, the physical copy of the game. If the game's installed to the internal storage, it's quicker, 30 seconds. When they put it onto an SD card, there's a couple of different models there, just to show the difference. It's 34 seconds, so four seconds longer than the internal storage, but it is actually faster than the cartridge. Now, don't just buy the cheapest SD card you see on Amazon. There is a difference. I'm not going to shop around, not really going to go into it into too much depth, but we see I'm just at a store and they've got ones that are branded for the Switch. And the idea is parents just see that and buy that because they see Mario, it must work with the Switch. But if you actually do your homework, you'll realize that some of them are faster than that Mario option and they can be less money as well. So all vary in sizes. You might not want 256 gig, you might want to go for 128 gig, um, but even the switch like that wasn't enough storage most people end up with an sd card you may even have one lying around i have one in my phone which i'm most likely going to repurpose so emmc isn't terrible we've got solid state drives as they get bigger their read and write speeds improve but there's two different technologies there are sata ssds now the transfer speed between emmc and sata ssds can actually be very very close where they differ if we talk about lanes if you think of it like being uh, roads so emmc let's just say it's single lane of traffic you can do your 70 miles an hour but then the sata ssd is like a dual carriageway where you've got two lanes so everything's going at the same speed you're just getting more of it down the road uh, the nvme drives will be better than sata ssds and again as i said as they get bigger the read speeds and the write speeds get faster. So I think for most people, shooting down the middle at the 256 gig model will be the way to go because you're not having to immediately worry about finding a micro SD card. Uh, people want to know about, is that enough storage? It does vary from game to game to game. So I've got Project Wingman, which is like Ace Combat. You're flying planes, shooting stuff down. That's, that's only 15 gigabytes. Halo the Master Chief Collection, which is pretty much all the Halo games, give or take, that's about 35 gig and several titles to play within that game. Some games can be 70 gig, might be 100 gig or more uh, if it's Red Dead Redemption, for example. So it does, it does vary and you've always got that SD card option. So I've gone for the 512 because of the anti-glare, because I want a decent amount of storage. All of they've confirmed and put it in the tech specs that all of the models use socketed 2230 m.2 modules but they say it's not really intended for end user replacement so some people were hoping that they could just buy the base model buy themselves an mvme drive m.2 open it up and then get yeah more for their money get it done cheaper so we don't know how that's going to work out. We'll have to wait. There'll be guys like Steve at Gamers Nexus who will definitely do a teardown when he gets his hands on it. Um, for Joe Public, it might not be the way to go. I see lots of people, they, they bring me like their DualShock pads. They opened them up, broke the ribbon cable. I've had PlayStation 4s come to me. People opened them up to clean it. They watched a YouTube video, thought that's really, really easy. And then they damaged the ribbon cables and they can't use the Blu-ray drive and stuff like that. So... For some of us, it might be a viable option. I'm going to say for most people, maybe not, and just buy uh, what you think suits you. So as I say, maybe shoot down the middle. It is a little bit more money, but even the base model, you're going to spend a little bit more money on SD cards. So I think shooting down the middle is a pretty, pretty good way to go. So that brings us... Oh, did I mention the IGN guys? They played all their games off the SD card. They were perfectly happy. So even if you go to the base model, 
just want to get done as cheap as possible for the kids use their sd card off the switch probably won't be a problem at all i doubt they'll even notice the difference right let's do the let's do the hardware section steam deck is the most powerful full featured gaming handheld in the world that sounds very jeremy clarkson ish so real gamepad controls talk about comfort now some people aren't happy about the d-pad the thumbsticks the uh, action buttons all being in line I, I don't see a problem with that um certainly not the buttons at the very corner we'll explain why a little bit later so it says the thumbsticks are capacitive we hope they won't suffer drift which is something pretty much all switches end up having it's moving without you even touching it hopefully they've nailed it we won't have that problem the triggers are analog that's a big deal it means it's not just on or off when you touch it if you're playing a driving game you want to feather the throttle you don't want to touch it your full throttle let go you're off so that's that's good to know the a and neo doesn't have analog uh triggers so yeah got another win here for the steam deck we've got the grip buttons on the back so if you don't like the a b x y being off in the top corner just remap those actions where it's underneath where your hands are naturally your other fingers are naturally resting on so not going to be a problem seven inch touchscreen doing a 720p resolution yeah it's good enough good enough resolution for the size we've got the track pads to emulate mouse control so we've got the gyro as well it's kind of interesting so i remember back in the day watching my friends play like mario or sonic and they do that they think the character will jump a little bit higher if they just give a bit of force with a gamepad uh no that never worked but now we have gyro sensors so it can feel six axis we can tilt it all over the place and some games make use of that uh, this is the dual shock for i like to use on my pc i, I can, can actually use the touchpad as a mouse and i use it as a gamepad and use it for emulation i find it really really useful having all those controls on this gamepad and to have it all built into the steam deck as well i think it's pretty awesome so we've got a real gameplay footage there he's playing doom eternal looks pretty good to me so you can see with his left thumb is moving with his right thumb is on the actual touch pads and broad strokes with his thumb is us moving the arm with a mouse and if he wants to do fine aim which we do with our wrist just minute adjustments he's actually just resting his thumb on the touch pad it's capacitive knows the thumbs there and then you'll see him just gently move the gyro to get the fine aim so it might take a little bit of practice but i see that being really versatile and could really be almost as good and accurate as using the keyboard and mouse if you put the practice in pretty pretty cool so everything you need faster story so we've talked through that emmc it's not the end of the world but you could do better 256 gig nvme will be faster and the 512 is faster still don't need to go over all that again hi-fi audio so we've got stereo speakers in it cool uh, we can we've got microphones built in so we can chat and we've got three and a half mil jack or headphones if you don't want to use bluetooth for wireless headphones 40 watt hour battery so they're saying best case seven to eight hours usage i'm thinking more yeah you know, two hours if you're doing hardcore gaming but it will depend you can adjust the settings uh, you might play a game at 60 frames per second but think actually i get away with 30 i don't really need it to to be 60 frames per second and that will help the battery life so yeah on a per game basis uh, it's kind of hard to give a definitive amount of time you're going to get out of it uh, it's got expandable io the single usb c jack is multi-purpose used for charging peripherals or even throwing a game onto a big screen at the same time any usb c hub can be used to expand your options or you can use their official dock so literally the only thing it won't be able to do is having those external graphics cards which we talked about earlier in the video it does have wi-fi not wi-fi 6 it'll be wi-fi 5 so ac not ax although i've got a wi-fi 6 router i'm not can be using wi-fi 6 but to be perfectly honest the speeds that i get at wi-fi 5 outstrip my internet speed anyway so it's not really a problem um, that'll be plenty good enough uh, we've got fast suspend resume basically just put it to sleep in the middle of your game and resume where you left off so they talk about the sd cards again they're at the bottom of the unit don't buy the cheapest one do your homework find what's going to be the best value for money get a good fast card and uh, yeah should have a good experience on it so it says use your deck as a pc because it is one this is what i'm excited about 
what I've been telling my friends about, they said, oh, you know, we're going to get a, what's this OLED switch about? And I was like, well, maybe have a look at this because I know your kids are going to ask for a PC. This is a PC as well as being a portable gaming device. So, uh, yeah, you can see he's using the keyboard and mouse. He's playing a game, but then he tabs out. You can go into the browser to get some help with the game or look things up. And, yeah, could be kids' first PC. So they can do their homework on it. They can connect printers up and print stuff off. Uh, so, yeah, for my brother, he doesn't have a laptop. He doesn't have a PC. He has a PlayStation. He works away a lot. He ends up dragging that PlayStation with him wherever he goes. So uh, not very convenient. If he had this, he could just take the Steam Deck, play the games portably when he's away, come home, and, uh, yeah, he's got a full PC. So I think that's kind of cool. Well, I've got a, a full desktop gaming PC. I still see a use for this. Uh, I'm quite interested in doing the emulation with it. So I like to do the Nintendo Wii U. Uh, girlfriend had one back in the day, bought a few games for her. So it's quite an interesting system in that the gamepad has a monitor on it built in. And that has one view in some games. And then what you see on the big screen is a different view. So uh, Star Fox Zero, for example, it uses gyro controls as well for aiming. So I'm really interested to see how that pans out. We can see that the monitor on the the big monitor and the little screen on the Steam Deck, they're both on. So maybe there's the potential where I get as close to the Wii U experience as I can get. I'm, I've got my controller, which is the Steam Deck, with the monitor showing me the cockpit view, and I'm looking up and I've got the game view. So yeah, really excited to see the potential. And of course, I can play my titles when I'm out and about. Really, really, um, yeah, really looking forward to it. A lot of potential. It says you can also install and use PC software, of course, browse the web, watch streaming video, do your normal productivity stuff, install some other games, whatever. You can put Windows on it if you really, really want to. I'm not going to, or well, I will do that just because I can to see what's possible. But I think I'm ultimately going to lose performance by doing that. I know the drivers for AMD stuff on Linux are actually pretty good, uh, in many cases better than Windows. So. Yeah, I might put Windows on and try VR and stuff like that, but I think ultimately I will return to SteamOS and the uh, Arch Linux operating system. So it says it plays nice with all your accessories. Steam Deck is Bluetooth ready. USB-C port can handle all sorts of I.O. Want to have a fighting tournament on the, go, on the go? Covered. Want to play with your Bluetooth mouse and keyboard? Covered. Want to play your favorite Bluetooth headphones? Yeah, you're good to go. So I've got an 8-bit DOE arcade stick. That's quite cool. That can work over Bluetooth. It's got a cable that came with it, as well as its own USB dongle. So I can take my Steam Deck to a friend's house with my fight stick. We can actually connect it to the TV. If we've got the right cable, USB-C, or we'll do it through the dock. We don't really want to play on the 7-inch screen. We'll play it on the TV. They can use the Steam Deck as one controller. I can use my fight stick as the other. We can do fighting games, two-player games on the screen. That is pretty awesome. There's a dock too, so we'll talk about that more later at the end of the video when we get into the uh, into the tech specs. So they're showing a kid playing in the back seat of the car. I'm getting flashbacks of my Sega Game Gear. Uh, I had one, my brother had one. We're connecting with a cable to play against each other. Good times back in the day, good memories. See a lot of people calling this the Gabe Gear uh, or Gabe Boy. So uh, yeah, kind of cool. Get onto the software tab. Welcome to your new home. The all new home screen is everything you love about Steam in one place. Pretty sure we went over that earlier, talking about uh, big picture mode and how they've um, got a dashboard just for PC as well as the Steam Deck. They're both going to be the same, so that's going to be fine. Uh, all the Steam features you'd expect. So Steam chat, chat with your friends, got notifications pop up, cloud saves. It saves are stored online. As long as I've got an internet connection, if I'm commuting to work, playing a game, backed up, um, coming back uh, on the train, going home, I finish playing, I save, goes online, and then I finally get through the front door, get home, and I can play on my proper gaming PC and just take off from that save that was stored online. Pretty versatile. Talks about remote play, stream games from your home PC directly to your deck, no matter your, where you are. So there are actually streaming services i'm pretty sure xbox does one now there's google stadia nvidia geforce now if you don't have a gaming pc if you do have one then your pc can play games and with remote play 
you can stream it to a device. Now I can do this already. I can, it's just an app. I can do it on my phone. I can do it on my tablet. It's not as convenient because I need to pair a controller to my phone or tablet, prop the phone or tablet up whilst I'm playing. With the Steam Deck, everything's built in the screen and the controllers because by remote play, it is not having to process the graphics. You will get better battery life out of it. However, you will get lag latency delay by streaming. It's not going to be ideal for all games, but for some, you get away with it. You can just sit out in the garden and, uh, yeah, away from the noise of your PC uh, playing these games. So, I've got the store, which is the full store. It's not a cut down experience for the Steam Deck, it's what's available on PC. Same for the Steam Deck, that's cool. Um, we've got the community, all our updates and friends. Yeah, fine. It says your Steam library anywhere. I need to cut through a lot of the crap. We'll just stick on the important points. So Steam just works on deck. Talking about the thumb sticks and the trackpads. Uh, we've got those shortcut buttons you know, for finding search. So if we've got lots and lots of games, yeah, it's just convenient to do. I think we covered that earlier. More gameplay. Ah, the operating systems. So this is where things get really, really interested. So some people will be confused about this. On Steam Deck, your games run on a different operating system than the one on your desktop PC. Not strictly speaking true. I have Linux on a laptop, but I know what I mean. Most people only know of Windows. It, they've got a new version of Steam OS built with a Steam Deck in mind and optimized for a handheld gaming experience. It comes with Proton, a compatibility layer that makes it possible to run your games without any porting work needed from developers. For Deck, we're vastly improving Proton's game compatibility and support for anti-cheat solutions by working directly with the vendors. Hold on to your butts. So that's a quote from Jurassic Park saying, it's a Linux system, you know this. When the movie, she actually says, oh, this is a Unix system, I know this. So Linux is a derivative, branches off from Unix. So some of us do use it, some of you won't be aware, but it is free software, free operating system. That's pretty cool. So Steam have tried to do this in the past. You'll hear about Steam machines. So the idea was you could buy a PC um, from somewhere or you could build your own. And rather than having to buy a Windows license or use Windows, they would give you the Steam OS and you just play your games through that. Now, the reason it kind of fell flat on its face was compatibility, not that many games working and this is where Proton comes in. So let's try and do a practical example. I said I like to do emulation with a Wii U. I use a software called CMU, the emulator. Now I don't think that has a version built for Linux. They did it for Windows. Now what I can do, I've got my Windows PC, I've got the folder with the software, I've got the games on there. I can copy those onto the Steam Deck, tell Proton, that's CMU, that's Windows. And it goes, oh okay. And it will in essence, uh, translate the language so Linux understands what it's saying. Okay, so they're hoping by the time the Steam Deck is released, they will have 100% compatibility for all games on the Steam Store. Some of them aren't compatible on Linux. This is what Proton is all about. So I'm really excited what this means, not just for mobile gaming, but those of us that want to use Linux, it could really help. Um, those people using other distros, other versions of Linux. It is actually quite exciting. So, um, yeah, hold on to your butts. That's going to bring us on to the tech specs. So, yeah, just see where the D-pad is, where all these buttons are, the thumbsticks click, it talks about the microphones and the screen. I don't need this video to go on any longer. We can see the headphone jack. The Type-C port is at the top. Bit strange, I think some people would expect it at the bottom, so it would naturally just sit into a cradle, but they put it at the top. Now I can kind of understand that if you're going to prop it up on a desk and you want to plug it in, you, you wouldn't be able to do that on the desk because you want that on, on the surface. So to have the cable over the top, I could kind of, yeah, either way, I, I yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue it. Um, some people like it on top, some people prefer it on the bottom. Take from that what you will. Uh, so we've got the grip buttons on. We can assign and we've got the micro SD card slot. We get into the actual nerdy stuff, the tech specs. So the press processor is AMD APU. So we, we don't get Thunderbolt. We said that was Intel technology. AMD have been 
like the spear point of integrated graphics for quite some time now. This is what APUs are. Uh, they they do Zen CPUs that don't have any graphics at all on PC, so you have to have a dedicated graphics card. But with the APU, everything's built in. You've got the CPU and the graphics together. They're saying the CPU portion of it has is Zen 2, four cores, eight threads. That's fine. That's what my although my desktop is quite old, that has four cores, eight threads, and that's playing every game pretty much fine. It's it's all down to the graphics really when it comes to gaming for the most part. So it's telling us the clock speeds, how fast it'll be, uh, and what makes up the GPU portion, which is quite important when it comes to gaming. So that's the latest architecture. So if you're not really into all the tech stuff, just think what the PlayStation 5 uses, what the latest Xboxes have, just scaled down a little bit because it's not trying to do 4K and it's running off a battery. There's no point going crazy. Uh, it just needs enough power to get the job done portably. Uh, what is essential for APUs for the graphics to work well is fast memory. We've got 16 gig of low powered because we don't want a lot of voltage sucking the battery life. A DDR5, which is a quad channel configuration, speeds pretty good, should be fine. So we did talk about the storage earlier, EMMC, not the end of the world. Kids probably won't notice the difference. If you've got deeper pockets, you can buy increased storage, which is faster. And we said they're all on these socketed 2230 modules. Now, you do need to be careful if you do attempt to do uh, a swap and do that yourself. Most of the NVMe drives are 2280. Like, they look like a stick of chewing gum long and rectangular. The 2230 is more of a square, uh, so they're not as common to find, but that may change in the future. I talk about the controls. I think we've done enough of that earlier. HD haptics, I'm sure we get some kind of rumble through the trackpad when you're touching it. Uh, yeah, haptic feedback, 55% better latency on the trackpads. We've got the six axis gyro, so we can tilt our controller around. To aim, very cool. The display 1280 by 800, basically 720p resolution, which isn't bad. Like it, the image will look a little bit soft if you put it out onto a 1080p monitor, but it's not bad. And I'm when I watch the IGN hands-on preview when they playing it on the monitor, that looked like 720p to me, but it wasn't bad. Uh, 1080p would definitely be a sharper image. On the device itself, it's saying that's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. It just means it's a bit more square than rectangular. 16 by 9 is fine. Optically bonded IPS LCD for enhanced readability. So an OLED might have helped battery life a little bit because black is black. The screen is off. It's only when it needs to light up certain pixels that they are activated. So it's not using as much energy. But to be fair, I use an IPS panel on my desktop. I really like it. I like the viewing angles. Uh, I like the colors that it reproduces. So yeah, perfectly happy with it. Uh, these engineers have to weigh up the pros and cons. So um, yeah, it's not the end of the world. It's not an OLED. I know people go on about them because of the deep ink blacks, but yeah, they, OLEDs have their issues too. So the display size is seven inch diagonal. That's even if you buy a you know, 42 inch TV, that's how you measure it from bottom left hand corner to the top right hand corner. Uh, the brightness is 400 nits, typically 60 hertz refresh rate. So we're trying to get like 60 frames per second. Uh, ideally, uh, it's touch enabled to screen, which is cool. And we've got ambient light sensors, so it will brighten up, it will dim, depending on your uh, surroundings, the brightness in the room. Uh, Bluetooth 5.0, so of course, keyboard, mouse, headphones, controllers, whatever, connected up. Wi-Fi, it doesn't do Wi-Fi 6, tops out at AC, but that should be plenty fast enough. Uh, talks about the audio, we know it's got stereo, we know about the dual microphone, talked about that earlier, and the headphone jack, 3.5mm, that's cool. So multi-channel over USB-C, 45 watt Type-C power supply charger that comes with it. Uh, 40 watt hour battery, so 2 to 8 hours of gameplay, that's going to vary depending on what you do, as we said before says what SD cards are supported and external displays by USB-C. So we did say pretty much at the start of the video about those other devices using the USB monitors. That's what this alt mode is about. So you know, we can do 8K, 4K, but don't expect it to play games at that resolution. It's, it's not optimized for that. It's meant for 720p, but that doesn't mean you can't 
connect it to a 4K monitor. If you're just doing light tasks, uh, it can well manage doing web browsers and watching videos, movies at 4K natively. Quite imagine it can do that. So I've got the size of it. Uh, it's a little bit bigger than the Switch. It does weigh a little bit more, but I don't think that's really going to be a problem. Bigger, weighs more, but it's got more potential than the Switch. I'll, I'll take it. I'll live with it. It says the software is SteamOS, which is Linux, Arch-based. We've talked about that. And the desktop, KDE Plasma. Let's talk about the official dock, which we don't know what it will cost or when it will come. We can use USB-C docks. You might already own fine anyway, but if you want to buy their one, we can see there's a USB-C cable comes out the back of the dock, which will then plug in the top of the Steam Deck when it's in the dock. We've got DisplayPort 1.4. That's what's on the other end of my Rift S VR headset. My Rift S has one cable that then goes off into two plugs. One's DisplayPort, one's USB 3. So I can see I'll be able to give that a go. Not sure how good it will be. It's not really designed to do VR, but we'll give it a go anyway. HDMI 2.0 to connect to a monitor or a television. Power in, so that will just be the power adapter that comes with the device. Put it into the dock instead. Ethernet jack to get it on your network. So wired is always better than Wi-Fi. I will get better internet speeds that way. So uh, yeah, lower ping numbers, less latency, less lag. Always good. So always play wide if you can. So that's their dock. So I think we can leave it there, guys. If you do have more questions, I can try and answer them or help each other out in the comments below. Obviously, over time, we'll get more information. And when we get finally get it out in the wild, um, we can really get our hands dirty with it. But we'll leave it there. Have a great day. Have a great evening. Whatever you choose to do after watching this. And as always, I'll see you. When I see you next, ciao for now.